Welcome everybody to our 20th session of our antibiotic free webinar. Today we will be discussing one of my favorite topics, which is uh, application of probiotics at the hatchery. My name is Luis Valenzuela and I'm one of the speakers for today. Um, uh, here together with El Chadwick, we are part of the global product management team. In our case, we're managing the part of poultry star. I have been with Biomin already for uh, pretty much close to five years. And uh, my background is nutritionist, uh, animal nutritionist, focus more on the gastric animals. Um, with me today, we have, uh, I have one of my colleagues and one of our distributors in uh, Turkey. My colleague is Francesco Castellone. Francesco, if you're there, say hi. Please introduce hi. shortly you say. Can, can we have some few words from your background, please? Yes, good day, everybody. My name is uh, Francesco Castellone. I am the technical and marketing director in uh, Middle East and Africa in uh, Biomin. Uh, I am a poultry uh, veterinarian. Uh, I'm uh, with Biomin uh, since 2017. And my main focus is uh, gut health uh, solution with the feed additives. Thank you, Luis. Thank you, and Francesco. And also uh, with us is from Bioki, uh, our distributor partner in Turkey. We have Irfan. Irfan, can you say hi, please, and introduce yourself? Okay, thank you, Luis. Uh, my name is Irfan Choban. I'm the managing director of BOK. Uh, BOK is a distributor of Bali, but not only a distributor, it is also a joint venture of Biomi. Uh, so, uh, BOK is established uh, 11 years ago. Uh, we are delivering all uh, Biomi products and uh, services in Turkey. Uh, I'm an agricultural manager, nutritionist. Uh, so, uh, I think that's all. Thank you, Irfan. I appreciate it. Okay, so um, Karina in the control room, can you help us with the first poll question before we start our exciting talk for today? Francesco, if you can help me to let yes. me see. Yeah. What? Yeah, the first, mm -hmm. the first poll question uh, will be, what is the main challenge with the quality of your day old chicks? Please select one of these, early mortality, fast events or wet litter, uniformity, or com a combination of more than one challenge. Please Thank you for just select talking. one of these uh, four options. Maybe we'll have a minute or two for that. And maybe if you can help me as well with the lecture of the results, if we have them on screen, please. Yeah, let's give a few more uh, seconds. And uh, we go. Yes. Uh, so, Luis, this is the response. Yes. We do have uh, early mortality with 34%. 34. Then yes. past events or wet litter, 0%. Wow, okay. Uniformity, 8% of more than one challenge, 58%. Please, okay. please comment on these uh, results. Well, uh, I'm not, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that the results are like that because this is what we have seen as well in the field and you can confirm that as a part of your visits to our customers. Early mortality seems to be one of the problems that are more linked to uh, the, day, the quality of our cheeks. Um, and also we have a combination of more than one factor that we will be also discussing now during our presentation. Thank you, Francesco. And then I will invite you now to just uh, pay attention to your screen. If you have questions, just put it on the chat. Uh, we also have some questions of you that you have registered previously. Then uh, you also submit some of your questions. So we will be discussing this along. Um, I will start now with my presentation. And I will invite my uh, colleagues uh, to put their uh, computer on listen only without audio so we don't have interruptions of any point of sounds. Thank you. 
So, well, when we when we talk about uh, the when we talk about the, the quality of the day old chicks, we're talking about also the, their welfare actually, their welfare in the first week. So um, I've been when I was preparing for this uh, webinar, I was going into some curious facts, and this is that for the chicks, it takes from anywhere from five to seven hours up to twenty four hours to hatch. So it's a long time where they are, if they are peeping already, they are being, uh, um, they are being, uh, they, they, they are being put at risk in, uh, to have colonization of bacteria that comes from the exterior that is in this hatching chamber. And we also have to understand that the first week where we see this welfare is uh, reflected on the mortality of the birds. We also have uh, problems with dysbiosis sometimes. That's why one of your options was pasty bent. And this first week of the chick represents around 16 to 20 percent of their life cycle. Um, I'm, I'm aware that we have a lot of attendees from Indonesia, and you can help me to confirm as well that in some cases you have birds that go from uh, 28 uh, days already to the slaughter. So these are very young birds that we call them in Latin America grillers that they actually have a pretty short lifespan. And the problem with the chicks is that they go through a drastic environmental change in the first days of life. So we were talking about these first hours where they are peeping, then they are they go into handling. So people start to handle them once they are already uh, fully hatched, then they go into a vaccination, then they are moved from the hatchery to the truck load, and then from the truck they go into the uh, into the barns, into the placement. So there are a lot of drastic environmental changes that are causing a lot of stress to our birds. Then we have that all their systems, respiratory system, digestive system, the microbiome overall, it's very mature and is very susceptible. At this time, there are also a lot of morphological and physiological changes going on so a lot of processes are going on and that's why it's critical these first uh, days of life any, anywhere from the first week up to the second week the first 14 days and we will talk about this later on a little bit more then um, this is basically a race against time for the establishment establishment of beneficial microbiota since we are talking about later on probiotics then i will focus more my talk towards the microbiota development so before we go into the first critical point, I will touch the second one, the first seven days. In the first seven days, there's a microbial rotation that is needed for these morphological changes that are going on in the intestine. Then we have the first uh, 14 to 21 days. In this time, small uh, intestine bacterial populations are being established. And also by day 14, with the new data that we have uh, come up with, uh, uh, having these field trials of our microbiome analysis, we have seen that by day 14 is where we need to also control this type of bacteria that, we, that is of uh, human importance, which is Salmonella. So we are very, very well aware that if we want to import, I'm sorry, if we want to export some of our fresh carcasses, one of the biggest control uh, by regulatory bodies is the amount of salmonella, whether they are positive or negative. And if uh, one of the data that we have seen coming along is that if we control the growth or the establishment of salmonella by day 14, we are pretty much set for the rest of the life of the broiler. However, we have just to be mindful of any potential outbreaks. And then after day 30, bacterial cecal populations are established. So these are, for me, the critical points. However, the most important one for the early life of the bird is hatching. This is where microbial colonization begins. This is where uh, all this uh, immunoprogramming is going on. So the immune system responses are affected by it. And we will also be discussing this along the presentation. Now, in the quality of day old chicks, these ones are influenced, like we were talking, by internal and external factors. We will not be able to control all these external factors. Let me get my pointer that are here because they are mainly controlled by uh, the parent stock in some cases, which will be depending on the age of the broiler flock, uh, of the breeder flock. Uh, also, things that we cannot control are genetics. Um, also where the, the colonization of different bacteria is in the digestive tract, 
So these things are out of our control. What we can control is additives, housing, hygiene, medication, temperature, the quality of the litter, even the geographical location of our farm. So one of the things that we have seen is that extreme hygiene could negatively influence the, influence the microbiome and the immune responses of early uh, of day old chicks or, or, or the establishment of it. Uh, wet chicks are after vaccination experience a significant drop in body temperature. So that's another issue that we have seen. And here we're talking about the application of, uh, in this case, vaccines at the hatchery. And also the use of medicated feed or antibiotic as a placement that could import, impair the microbiome development. So what do I mean by these three points? So we are trying to talk about the establishment of a beneficial and balanced microbiome. However, the extreme hygiene is an important factor in that we were talking about these sudden changes of environment that, uh, uh, that bring some stress to the microbiome and the establishment of good bacteria that we go from a very extreme hygiene uh, or clean environment, which can be a hatchery, to the barns where even if, although the farmer has tried to the best uh, of their abilities to control any potential pathogen that is in the environment, we also have uh, microbial contamination that comes along with the litter and so on. Then when we apply vaccination, that's another stress that may affect also or impair the establishment of good microbiota because the birds go, uh, get wet. And this uh, sudden change of temperature in the environment brings some kind of a stress to, to the birds. And last is the medicated uh, feed. Normally when we place the birds at the barns, we use some kind of antibiotic in some cases in order to uh, have better probabilities to have less mortality. And we will talk about this just in the next slide. So um, here I will talk a little bit of, uh, of, uh, some, of new research that is coming along. And this is uh, the research of this article is perturbation of microbiota in one a old broiler chicken with antibiotic for 24 hours. This negatively affects intestinal immunodevelopment. Uh, this research was conducted at the University uh, at Wageningen University uh, under Dirk, Dirk Chan Schuker. Um, he was the main the main researcher for this uh, for this project. Now, for me, this this is super interesting, and I saw a lot of new findings in here. And why I'm so I mean, when I read it, I was like so happy to see what he was discussing is because we are doing similar with uh, with our, uh, well with our services in in in, in biomed. We have two type of um, projects that are going on where we do research at the field, so we do a lot of microbiome analysis, and we are trying to now establish a service that hopefully in the future in the short term will come to you as well where we have periodical gut check, uh, it's called gut check the service, and where we are sampling uh, or we are having samples from the field, from the, uh, from the, the intestine, intestinal tissue, or also from some environmental samples in order to determine the microbiome compositions of all of, all of, of, of these samples. Now, what we saw in here, what uh, Dirk Chen was telling us in this paper, is that we had some perturbances by the application or early application of some antibiotics such as amoxicillin. So they were using amoxicillin in this trial. And here they have five groups, without antibiotics, with antibiotics at day five, so sorry, without antibiotics at day one, without antibiotics at day five, antibiotics at day five, and also at day 14 for the two groups. And then they could see the most of the um, changes when you apply, even though it's in a short term, when you apply moxicillin at early stage, is this uh, change or reduction in lactobacillus families. Now, higher abundance of lactobacilli by day 21, which is what we have seen with the research, results in higher expression of immunorelated genes and higher abundance of macrophages like cells suggesting that then the bird may have a better uh, overall health towards the end of the cycle. So that was also reflected here in this analysis of multivariate redundancy analysis, where we, had a uh, where we had a clear difference of up to eight different families. Uh, and at the end, 
uh, the, most of the difference was only by with three of these families that we can be we can see reflected in uh, day 14. And however, this was what it brought all these uh, changes or these perturbations to the microbiome. So what he was uh, coming along with uh, in the conclusion was that the perturbation of the microbiome at young age affects the crosstalk between intestinal bacteria and host cells. And then Short-term oral perturbation with an antibiotic during early life of the chicken affects microbial colon colonization and intestinal immunodevelopment, which was interesting for me to know is that these, these processes are delayed up to a period of two weeks. So you're pretty much uh, placing back two weeks of development of early immunodevelopment when you are using uh, or when you are using medicated feed in the field. And early colonization of the gut by microbiota is an important driver of immunodevelopment and immunoprogramming. So these were like the key findings from this research. And uh, I'm happy to read about it because this is what we are seeing right now in the field as well. So this brings me to the topic of what can we use in order to, let's say, replace antibiotics or, 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 or have these uh, replacement of early medicated feed. Well, the application of probiotics. So no, not antibiotics against life, but pro-life. So probiotics, in this case, is beneficial bacteria that, benefit, that benefits the host. So the application of poultry star at early age could improve greatly the quality of the old chicks. Now, what do I mean poultry star? I think most of you are familiar to what it is poultry star. If not, poultry star is a symbiotic. And this was one of the questions that I saw in the in the uh, in the entries that you did previous to this webinar, so it's a symbiotic where we have a pro and a prebiotic synergistically acting together to benefit the host. In the in this case today, we are not going to talk about all of them. However, we have three main versions. We have poultry star ME, which is the microencapsulated version. We have poultry star Sol, which is our soluble version uh, that goes into drinking water. And we have poultry star hatchery. Today, our main focus is on this. <clears throat> and this is the product that we have for poultry application, uh, for, for hatchery application. So this one is a soft gel that is applied on day old chicks to initiate and speed up the maturation of the immune system. And it also inoculates the gut with beneficial bacteria, creating competitive exclusion against opportunistic bacteri uh, bacteria. Now, the uniqueness of this product is that it helps in, uh, at the early stage uh, to develop a better gut structure and function. It also, we also have a better control of the microbiota and stability of it, therefore pathogen control. And it also improves the immune functions of the bird. So this is what poultry star hatchery is. And before we jump into trials with poultry star hatchery, I would like to touch a little bit on the hatchery applications. We have two commonly used uh, hatchery application methods for vaccines. And this is the water spray application and also the gel application. So this soft gel. <clears throat> now, I was reading uh, an article uh, that was written by Dr. Brian Jordan. And he, he was weighing in into the two type of application. He belongs to the Department of Poultry Science at the University of Georgia in the United States. And we know that vac vaccines are typically applied at the hatchery um, by using this uh, course spray method. And now more and more people is getting into the soft gel. Now, both of them are good, and we have to understand the nature of the application first. In some cases, viral vaccines such as infectious bronchitis vaccine in Newcastle and so on, are better to be applied by this method. However, he was pointing to a problem. Sometimes we have this early mortality driven by the, by the effect that this sudden uh, change on, on body temperature has by do doing this application. So um, there was a farm that he was referring to that where they had a three to 5% of newly delivered chicks to the hatchery uh, as, a, as a mortality. Uh, during the first three to five days once they were in the farm. And the whole problem of that was that this nozzle 
was um, a, the, 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 the open of the nozzle was too big. So this water was too much for the birds. Even though the, 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 the applicator was calibrated and so on, the drops were too heavy and it was making the birds too wet. So they solved the problem by just changing this, atoma, this, this nozzle. So they make it finer and then they had a mist instead of a, uh, instead of a heavy drop. Now, he was also saying that when you apply vaccines like coxy vaccine with a gel or products like a probiotic, you can raise the number of effective application droplets tip in ingested by chicks up to 30%. So this, that's why I'm explaining that both of them are good. This is most commonly used. It's very effective with viral vaccines, but probably using this methodology for delivering COXI vaccines and also products like probiotics will also bring, bring you a benefit. Now, we have also done the research and we wanted to know and understand that by putting poultry star hatchery with uh, a, a, a COXI anticoxial vaccine, we could deliver the same amount of, of OSIST at the same time, the same amount, uh, an even number of, of, of CFUs of bacteria. And in here, I'm just focusing on the part of the OSIST because this is what is critical. We understand that when we apply uh, the anticoxidial vaccines by water, we have to keep steering the mix. Otherwise, these OSIS tend to, to sink in uh, or, or to precipitate. And uh, we wanted to know what is happening when we put it in the gel. So we, we divided the, the layers of this gel preparation on the top, middle and bottom layer. And we run the experiment for 24 hours. And you can see the different time points in here. In all the time points, we could see an even number of OSIS that can be delivered with the application of poultry star and the co-application of the vaccine and poultry star hatchery. So we did the homework and we are confident to say that, uh, yes, you can use the, these type of vaccines in combination with poultry star hatchery in this case. So what do we try to tackle with the application of poultry star hatchery? Well, the challenges that you already brought up and that were in the first poll question. So first week, uh, body weight gain, support to the co uh, or coadjuvant support to the application of vaccines bring hydration in cases where we have to transport the birds, um, improve first week dysbiosis, and we will see one of the trials later, uh, improve initial mortality, and also increase the uniformity of the flock. That was an, uh, another one, uh, another answer that we had from the poll question. So before I go into my next slide, I would like to have uh, the help of Karina. Karina, can you bring the second poll question? And Francesco, can you help me to read it from the screen, please? Yes. <clears throat> Here we go. So this is the second poll question. Do you apply probiotics at the hatchery? Please select one. Yes. No. No. But I'm willing to try it. I'm not certain whether my equipment is optimal for that. And the last one will be, I'm not sure about the compatibility with vaccines. Please select one of these five options. Let's uh, wait a few uh, seconds. Then we'll see what will be the response from our audience. Here we go. So, Luis, I'm going to read it out. Thank you. Uh, yes, is 18%. No, is 25%. No, but I'm willing to try it. 32%. I'm not certain whether my equipment is optimal for that. 7%. I'm not sure about the compatibility with vaccines, 18%. As you can see, it's a bit uh, uh, balanced, but I would say uh, no, but I'm willing to try it with 18% as the lead here. So please, Luis, no. comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Well, I'm glad to see also that you are willing to try, even though you are not currently using probiotics at, uh, in your hatchery operations. 
um, that you're afraid of the compatibility with other vaccines. Well, let me tell you that we have extensively used poultry star in combination with even viral vaccines, bronchitis vaccine, Newcastle, um, also the COXI vaccines. We have not seen any um, impairment to the response of the vaccine. And um, so I'm confident to say that you can combine both of them. Of course, this might not apply to all probiotics, and we can discuss this in another talk. Or you can approach me later on. You will have the, my email. You can send me your questions in, in this regard. And um, well, I'm also glad to see that uh, a, a good portion of you also are using already currently these uh, probiotics at the hatchery. Now, by using this type of probiotics, um, are we seeing in the screen now? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Karina, for showing the screen back. And um, now we can see what is a complete mode of action of a uh, multi strain probiotic, so or symbiotic as it is poultry star. Now, we have competitive exclusion. Uh, this means what we already know that a bacteria does, which basically is attached to the receptors and by it also creating some immune responses, which I will explain a little bit later. We have also that once the bacteria attach and creates competitive exclusion, one of the mode of actions is to acidify locally this layer of the mucus where they are. And this happens by the release of uh, their main, uh, in the case of poultry star, the secretion of their main metabolite, which is lactic acid. Um, this, we have learned that up to day 21 is very beneficial. Then we have what is needed for the further growth of the bird, the production of other metabolites, which we have also have, we have evidence that it happens with, uh, with the supplementation of poultry star, which is the uh, production of metabolites such as acetate, propionate, butyrate. We know butyrate uh, has two great mode of actions, which is one energy for the enterocytes, and the second one is uh, to inhibit the movement or the mobility of uh, salmonella from the cecum down to the to the small intestine. Then we have the modulation of immune responses, and then here you have two examples with, with a good bacteria and with a pathogen where this bacteria is sampled, in this case, by dendritic cells. And then there is a, 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 these uh, fragments of, of the bacteria or the components of the bacteria are presented to the immune cells. And then we create whether a tolerance response in the case of a good bacteria and then an anti-inflammatory cytokine is released like IL-10. And then we also have with the inclusion of a pathogen then an inflammatory response and therefore we can have chronic inflammation afterwards. So immune response modulation is, 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 uh, is, is one of the benefits that we have. Production of bacteriocins, most of these bacteria in a way produce their own metabolite that is against um, uh, pathogenic threats. These are called bacteriocins. And in response, we have the production of defensins that are from the host. So that's the natural way how, the, how we also uh, make front to infectious uh, diseases, and we have a bifidogenic defect uh, with the with the presence of one of our bacteria, which is Bifidobacterium animalis. Then, in the application of this specific bacteria at hatching, we can help to maximize the potential of our flocks. By this is these are the benefits that we have seen uh, with the application of uh, poultry star hatchery or poultry star soil at the hatchery. The decrease of first week mortality, or up to 14 days, uh, the increase on vaccine response, the increase on uniformity, the increase in welfare, the decrease on morbidity, and the improvements in body weight. So these are the benefits that we can expect. Now, if you want some numbers, the body weight that we have seen, we have seen an improvement up to 15.5 grams, or similar compared to a, a growth promoter. Uh, which can go anywhere from 5 grams up to 15.5, which is the most that we have seen in the field. The decrease in mortality, we have seen greater than this, but this is like an average of 0.60% mortality improvement, uh, which means less mortality in first uh, week flocks, and an ROI of up to 5 to 1. Now, I will hurry up a little bit because the time is, is uh, now less. Then we have this first trial, which is the effect of alternative administration of poultry star hatchery, hatchery supplementation on broiler performance. I invite you to read the paper. Here is the reference. It was conducted by Giorgio Brugaletta from the University of uh, uh, Univo University in Italy. 
And um, here I just present two treatment groups. So the poultry star hatchery with the control group. However, we had four groups in here and you can get all this information, but I don't have the time to present it to you. Uh, where we had the control group without poultry star, poultry star ME only, uh, poultry star hatchery and poultry star hatchery plus the follow up of poultry star ME in the field. Now we had really good results. This is just a portion of it. So what do we see by the effect of poultry star hatchery by day eight? We had a higher body weight, so almost 10 grams improvement. We had a daily feed intake that was also improved. Remember that by applying this type of product in the birds, you're also, um, you're also influencing the printing behavior of the birds. So when they arrive to the hatchery, they are easier to try to find feed, which is this picking or printing behavior that they have. Then when it comes to the effects by day 14, we can see that now the control is kind of catching up. So in here we saw better, uh, better results when you add poultry star in the field already. Poultry star and me was in this case. However, the daily feed intake it also remains uh, a bit higher, just by one gram. So then in the mortality, like I said, one of our biggest um, uh, benefits is the, uh, the the decrease in early mortality. Here we had a problem uh, day eight. It was more towards management, so we had a sudden peak of 1.39% compared to 0.93% uh, in, in, from the control. However, this did not increase by day 14. In, in, in the, uh, different to, it, to this, we can see that the control group had a sudden increase or a spike on mortality. So the mortality in this case remained at the same, just with the application of poultry hatchery. Um, then we can see also another uh, another benefit of having this early application of uh, probiotic is the incidence of food fat dermatitis. Though we did it with all the, uh, uh, we saw the results with all the applications or all the programs. With Polterster Hatcher, we had also very good results just with this single application. So you can see from the treatment to the control, 88.4% uh, uh, score is zero. Then we didn't have much score one compared to the control from 10.8 to 4.4%. And also the score two was very mild. Here we're talking the whole cycle, 42 days. So these were the benefits seen just with this single application at the beginning. So one of the key findings was that symbiotics may improve broiler health and productive performance by a stabilization of gut microbiome at early stage. Also, substantial lessening of food fat dermatitis was seen in all supplemented groups. So not only this, but all the other groups. Now, if we move into the commercial part, we can see that we had two treatment groups, antibiotic treatment, the first five days, and the poultry star group, which was hatchery application plus poultry star ME, 700 grams per ton a day uh, from day one to day nine. So in here we had uh, high uh, uh, mortality and we also had problems with bloating of their cecum. So this is what we saw at the end of the cycle. And we saw at the, uh, the first week, we have an increase in first week weight by 11 grams. So this is uh, a very good benefit for a customer and a reduction mortality by 0.71%. So here you can see the total numbers. So from 1.46% um, to 0.75 at seven days, and at 48 days from 5.2 to 4.3. So we have a reduction of 0.9%. Uh, we also, at the end of the cycle, we had an increase of uh, 40 grams and a reduction of FCR of up to four points. So until now, the customer keeps using the same program. They had good results and they could replace this uh, medicated feed at the beginning. We also have more results. Uh, these coming from uh, Czech Republic. In here, we had 50,000 birds in each of the treatments, and we obtain a, a, a productivity index of 365 uh, compared to the control. So here you can see also the total numbers. Uh, the difference was minimal, but the main idea was the same to remove. Uh, in this case, the application of this antibiotic at the beginning. Now, talking about the applicator, 
uh, we have this um, cabin booth and then uh, earphone in, 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 in um, Francesco will be talking about them later on. So this is the applicator that we can facilitate in case you want to use this product. Then we also have handheld devices. So we have an automatic applicator um, the, that is like a backpack, like this uh, fertilizer uh, equipment that also has a exclusively made gun, handheld gun to supply uh, or to spray the gel. And you have also, also the handheld gun alone in case that you have your own supply of air and you, uh, you don't need to move, it's just a stationary. Uh, together with this, if you are interested in using this product, uh, we facilitate you either if you want to use only the hatchery application of Pulp Star Salt, we facilitate these uh, protocols. Um, you can use a single dose or up to a triple dose with any applicator so that is a water applicate, uh, application, or you can also use it in combination of a gel. Then you can, we can add colorants in. Um, this is not essential, but if you want to have some sort of control, and this is, will also be talked by my colleagues afterwards. And of course, we have a uh, pole twister hatchery. <clears throat> this one uh, comes in two presentations. We have 800 grams and 200 grams. The dose is 100 grams per 10,000 day old chicks. And uh, we can apply from 25 to 27 uh, milligrams per 100 uh, day old chicks per basket. Now, uh, I need to correct here, and I didn't realize it's 25 ml or 27, depending on the amount of chicks, anywhere from 100 to 150. Uh, the old chick basket. So the applicator is very flexible. Now, as a value proposition of what poultry star hatchery can bring to you, this was designed to be applied on hatchlings and its application boosts maturation of the immune system, which stimulates also early feeding behavior. So the application of poultry star hatchery does and sits the gut with beneficial bacteria for a strong start. So this is what uh, the application of early symbiotic can bring to your birds and uh, you will have further benefits from it all the way to the slaughtering in some cases. So thank you for your attention. This is my email. I will be here uh, pending for the questions and answer session, but I would like now to give the control to my colleague, uh, Francesco. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Luis, for this uh, interesting talk. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, now, uh, Together with uh, uh, Dr. Choban, uh, we are going to uh, to show you a, a success story of uh, applying poultry star at the archery level in uh, Turkey. Next slide, please. First of all, I would like to have a very short introduction about uh, broiler uh, production in uh, Turkey. Uh, Turkey is a, a very developed uh, broiler market, and we do have uh, many integrators uh, in this country. Most of the integrators, uh, they are fully integrated, having feed mills, breeder farms, hatcheries, and also broiler uh, uh, farms. As you can see here, uh, these are the numbers of uh, uh, broilers produced in 2020, which is uh, 1.3 billion. So is a is a one of the major uh, player uh, around the world, Turkey. And then also the number of hatching eggs in 2020 it was uh, a bit more than 1.6 uh, billion. Uh, another uh, important point to uh, to uh, to consider is that uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, hatcheries in uh, Turkey. And according to this report from uh, TUIK in 2016, there are 75 registered hatcheries. Considering this number, uh, with our market intelligence between the Biomin team and the BioKey uh, team, we saw that there was an opportunity for us to introduce uh, a probiotic uh, um, product in this segment of the hatching. So next slide, please. So uh, 
and now uh, here is uh, uh, what uh, what what is uh, our aim today is to show uh, you these success stories uh, and this uh, uh, teamwork between the Biomin uh, Middle East and Africa team and the BioKey uh, uh, team. So here uh, we have uh, Dr. Choban, and uh, uh, which I would like to to ask you, Ifan, uh, uh, why did the broiler integrators? start to use probiotics at the archery level in Turkey. What, what was your real experience in this kind of uh, topic, please? I think you are on mute, uh, Ifan. Okay, thank you, Francesco. Uh, as you said, uh, Turkey is uh, um, really uh, one of the big player in, uh, in the world uh, as a poultry uh, producer. Uh, Turkey is the tenth uh, biggest uh, poultry producer in the uh, in the world. Uh, antibiotic reduction is one of the main goals of uh, broiler integration, and it's the pressure of the public and the government, uh, the ministry. In this respect, uh, probiotics have a common practice, and Pulse Star is a uh, well proved reliable uh, product in the market. It's a very well known product in the Turkish market. Uh, one of the most important issues in the use of pole to start is to start it as early as possible, as uh, Louis said. Uh, because our goal is to place beneficial bacteria in the uh, sterile gut of the real hat chick before pathogen. Uh, therefore, both water soluble and Key form of pulp star is recommending uh, to use at day one. We always recommend it, strictly recommend it to start as much as uh, early as, uh, as the first day. So uh, this is a must. Um, but um, there was a still gap from the hatchery to barn. In the past, uh, uh, some some of our customers try to pulverize uh, by water, uh, but uh, it is not satisfied uh, satisfy the customer because uh, soaking chick uh, is a very uh, the day one is not um, uh, good for for the customers. So uh, this this gap was always there. So from barn to uh, from hatchery to barn, uh, chickens were open to pathogenic bacteria. Now, Fulton Star is uh, covering the gap. This is the perfect solution to cover the chickens gut from the very first moment of their life. The Fulton Star hatchery is one step ahead of the probiotic strategy uh, because of this uh, early step. We have received very positive feedback from our customers. Besides the reduction of antibiotic usage, they reported that Cofidia and necrotic enteritis has never been observed since they started to use Polkistar hatches. Of course, you can imagine what brings in boiler production. Better liability, better weight, uh, lower SPR and uh, better performance as a result. Uh, one of the most important topics in boiler uh, production, you know, is um, having a healthy gut. Uh, by using Polkestar uh, hatching, uh, you can immediately uh, have a uh, healthy, uh, healthy gut. Um, Moreover, uh, our customers said that uh, Polkistar hatchery uh, is a part of the salmonella control program, uh, especially the hatchery application is one of the most important key to chain. And as you know, uh, it's very important to give probiotic as early as uh, possible to control salmonella. So, um, uh, called three star hatchery application, specifically hatchery application, becomes uh, uh, the most important key uh, of some uh, control program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Irfan, for this uh, interesting insight and uh, interesting information. 
And uh, now also, what I would like to hear from the second question during this uh, webinar is, uh, uh, okay, the, now we understand why your customers are using the product, but uh, how did the, your team uh, convince uh, the customer uh, in uh, using uh, uh, Star uh, in the hatching? Yeah, Hatchery 5 is a new thing, of course, but uh, Poultry Star is not a new project. Since Poultry Star presented a long time ago in the search market, it is a well known product. In we had many trials, six trials with our customers. So it is already known as a good product to reduce mortality uh, and the antibiotic needs. Uh, it is proved in the uh, local field trials. Many customers use it for salmonella control, especially a breeder, uh, breeder company. So um, these benefits are already known. Uh, specifically, mortality reduction is very clear, very obvious. On the customer side, uh, if you are breeding antibiotics uh, as a nutritionist or veterinary, uh, if you believe in uh, probiotics, let's say specifically in poultry stock, you can easily understand the logic behind starting to use uh, poultry stock in a very early moment of the life. Uh, transferring chicken from hatchery to barn takes uh, from a few hours to a day sometimes. Uh, during this time, chickens are open to pathogenic bacteria and naturally uh, pathogens induced in the environment and uh, dominant uh, compared to beneficial uh, bacteria. Thanks to Polycystar Hatchery, you can avoid settling of pathogenic bacteria during this time. Um, additionally, the long transportation time caused dehydration in chicken. The gel part of the poultry star hatchery uh, provides energy and water uh, at, the ha uh, at the hatchery. So we uh, observe that, especially the, after the long transfer, uh, transportation period, uh, the reliability was much higher uh, on the chicken. Yep. Uh, we, uh, as the biotech team, have, have just uh, expressed uh, the moral action of Poultry Star uh, and the logic uh, of this Poultry Star hatching. So it is very clear, very obvious. During the pandemic time, of course, um, we couldn't uh, visit uh, a lot, and uh, we mostly arranged online meetings with our customers and demonstrated the hatching application. The applicator is simple and very user friendly. Uh, uh, yep. No electricity, just uh, press, pressure air. Uh, so we installed equipment to uh, some of our customers and uh, conducted some uh, in-Google trials. Yep. Feedback, feedback were very positive, obviously, for customers yep. uh, who are used quality stock getting started from the hatch is a huge advantage for sure yeah, I think speaking, uh, poultry star is a kind of uh, magical wand <laughs> by touching with this wand uh, you create the formation of the healthy intestinal flora at the very first moment uh, which normally takes uh, three weeks as we said uh, a healthy gut, uh, a formation of a healthy gut usually takes uh, three weeks, but the uh, process are hatching, you just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, Irfan, for, uh, for that. And I think uh, you also partly uh, answered to the next uh, question. Uh, so uh, we can see, please, uh, yeah, uh, how your team uh, uh, provided the service to the final customers. And I think partly has been already um, answered in uh, your previous uh, uh, comments, unless you have uh, something else to, to add uh, yeah. on, this, uh, on this aspect, please. Uh, 
but I think he is well trained uh, to install like using a uh, hatching application in uh, Austria uh, during the several uh, trainings. So thanks to Luis, uh, <laughs> they were all uh, having very good uh, uh, knowledge about the, the application. So uh, after importing the hatching application from Wyoming, uh, just uh, install the Ecomunity customers uh, hatching facility. And we train their um, staff as well. So they are technical uh, staff and uh, also trained by the uh, OKT. Um, in case uh, of need, uh, we are giving maintenance and uh, spare parts service as well. And what else? Uh, we are giving uh, technical information to the field staff and veterinaries uh, for yeah. further. Uh, uh, Further uh, for, uh, usage of uh, Polestar because, uh, as I said before, Polestar hatchery is not enough for me uh, this month. And uh, Polestar storm or Polestar engine in the sea uh, has some problems uh, continuously. Yep. So, with uh, giving technical information to staff. Definitely. Okay. Let's add, Francesco, something that uh, for me, it was a good surprise, and uh, Irfan, uh, you can confirm this. Like, my input was very minimal, and they actually, to the best of their capabilities, also with the hatchery managers, they were self-sufficient to actually put up the applicator by pretty much reading the manual as well. So mm -hmm. this applicator, is that's one of the greatest advantages that it has, is that you can, with simple tools, you can put it up together. It comes pre-assembled, and it's easy to just put it up and now what it takes a little bit of patience is the calibration of the equipment but yeah i, I was very happy to see that as well thank you okay oh, thank you thank you very much uh Irfan, for your uh, contribution and uh, yeah i think i think now we have uh is a question uh, time and uh, Luis, I will be happy to uh, pose you the first uh, question, if it's okay for you. So the yeah, first, yeah, please tell me. Yeah. Uh, what will be the effect of water sanitizers, such as uh, chlorine dioxide, acetic acid, hydrogen peroxide, and so on, against uh, uh, probiotics while using in the drinking water? Yeah, so coming to this point, we have tested uh, some of these uh, uh, some of these sanitizing agents that you talk about. Not all of them. So we have some of the um, some of the tests done with uh, chlorine dioxide uh, or free chlorine uh, for the effect. We know that we can the product can withstand up to five ppm of uh, chlorine free chlorine in the water. So uh, for water application, this shouldn't be a problem because I, as far as I understand, you don't go as, as high as 5 ppm of free chlorine. Uh, with hydrogen peroxide, we have up to 10 ppm as well. So chlorine dioxide, I think the maximum, because it's new data that I saw it was 8 ppm. So we should be good in this regard. It's quite compatible. Now, if we don't have an answer to the other um, solutions that you are using, then you can contact us and we can run a compatibility trial. That's pretty easy. Yeah. Hey, good, Luis. Thank you. The next question is also for you, um, Luis. Uh, is uh, what is the best age uh, in broilers for uh, a probiotic application? And basically, what is the difference between uh, uh, spore forming uh, bacteria? and non-spore forming uh, bacteria, please. Well, you know that to answer to this is not that straightforward. Um, we can have a full hour of conversation just on that because it depend, depends a lot on the mode of action. So like they said, they have non-spore forming bacteria that's mostly lactic acid based bacteria and spore forming oh. bacteria, which is the bacillus type. Now the mode of action is very different just because they are both probiotic doesn't make them equal in how they uh, their benefits and direct effects that they have in the body with poultry star or lactic acid based probiotic we can inspect the early priming of the immunosystem if given at early stage 
also the increase in diversity of the microbiome because we have seen it now uh, with, with the new research that we have on the microbiome. Uh, with the bacillus type, you have a more direct effect on aid, abs food aid, uh, aid absorption of the feed because they have some proteolytic activity as well. So um, this is the, the competitive exclusion is indirectly made with the bacillus type. But with the lactic acid-based bacteria, this is a direct effect as well in the gut epithelium where it matters, which is the firmly attached mucus layer, right? Um, so yeah, this is one, we can keep talking about that. And the first part of the application is how early? Well, in the case of lactic acid-based bacteria, as early as hatching is, for us, it gives the best results. And then a follow-up in the barns if needed, uh, also with the help of people like you, Francesco, or Irfan, with a dedicated program for that ki kind of uh, challenges that they may have in the farm. Okay, very good. Thank you, Luis, for that. Uh... I think, I, think there, I saw there was a question for you in there. Let me, let me, let me ask you. I saw it says, Dr. Francesco, uh, is your representative in Tunisia and what are your activities in the poultry and livestock sector in Tunisia? especially yeah. in the probiotic and food additive area. Yeah, uh, so basically we do have a representative in, uh, in uh, Tunisia. We do have a, a distributors and uh, the distributor is managed by our uh, area manager. Um, his name is uh, Fabrice Salar. Uh, so please, uh, uh, you can be in touch uh, with uh, Fabrice and uh, he and, uh, direct you uh, to the right uh, people in the in the countries. And to the second part of the uh, question, uh, yes, we do provide uh, feed additive in uh, Tunisia. Uh, we are very active in the uh, mycotoxin uh, uh, risk management and also other uh, feeds. And there was a, a follow up on that. It was for Nigeria as well. If we have representative in Nigeria, in in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, in Nigeria, yes, more or less, we do also have a, a representative. And again, here, uh, yeah, Fabrice is, is, is the area manager for this uh, region. Um, so please, uh, maybe uh, after I can share his uh, details and uh, uh, please be in touch uh, with the Fabrice uh, and uh, he will uh, give the direction for that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Francesco, if I'm not mistaken, we have come to the end of the hour, which is the time that we uh, unfortunately should end our webinar, our participa participation. There are a lot of questions which I will be answering and hopefully our, our marketing team can also send to you or also send to the regions and then in a way deliver this to our customers. I'm sorry we couldn't um, answer more of them, but yeah, there are many actually, I saw the list. And uh, this gives us maybe for a later session of Q and A's as well. That can be another idea, but we can discuss this internally. Uh, Francesco, thanks for your participation. Dr. Irfan Kovan was also a pleasure uh, sharing with you today. And yeah, if you have any questions, please just feel free to contact us or contact your local offices of Biome. Thank you for your attention, and um, we we'll see you in another time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.